Can you hear us? Yeah, we hear you very well. So this is Brian DeRobertis. We have uh, Dr. Uh, Aaron Fishman, Dr. Okay. Fisher, and Dr. Razavi here as well. Very good, yeah. Hello to everybody. Uh, with me is Matthias Ulrich again. Hello. And yeah, sh can we start? Shall we start? Yeah, or? yeah. Let's let's see what you got for us today. Yeah, very good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, a relatively complex case, we think. And maybe Matthias, you introduce the yeah. case. So we have a long calcified SFA occlusion at the left side. Uh, critical uh, the clinical data. He has a critical critical limb ischemia left side dig one has a necrosis, he has a severe claudication, left side walking capacity is reduced 50 meters, ABI very low 0.4, Rutherford class 5. Right side we have a FEMPOP bypass, which performed in February this year, and also a thromboartectomy uh, at the right groin uh, earlier. Next slide. This shows you the angiogram from the left side. You see the common femoral is patent, then a little stem. SFA is long occluded, heavily calcified. Uh, distal at the adductor's uh, channel, it's open again. The popliteal segment is open. Below the knee, we have uh, the proximal third, all three vessels open, but at the area of the foot, the flow is not good. Everything is occluded so far. Next slide. So the plan is to open at first the SFA, maybe below the knee. We want to open in the second step. Um, Therefore, we are in the right groin, crossover with uh, seven French cheese. We are in an integrate approach. <coughs> we also uh, still in the subindermal space. If we fail to go back into the true lumen, we also prepared for going retrograde by puncturing the distal SFA. And then we want to use the tumescent anesthesia uh, inside the SFA, <coughs> be able to uh, PTA with uh, oversized balloons to have enough space with using the bullfrog device. And then we put what would like to put in supera stents in this heavily calcified lesion. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, let's switch to the angio. Angio screen. <coughs> okay. Yeah, here once again the SFA occlusion. So. Um, yeah, right, he has uh, received treatment already. Bypass mm -hmm. is actually occluded, right? It was a very mm -hmm. small vein. Uh, then endo has been uh, the second treatment. Uh, and here now, uh, endo will be the primary treatment. Um, so you can see proximally relatively calcified, uh, distally even more calcified here, as you can see. And uh, the outflow is actually very bad. Uh, we don't think we will do both in one session. Uh, I think we will first uh, treat the SFA and then later on come with an integrate approach here uh, to try to uh, open something up here at the foot level, tibial level at foot level will be hard. Okay, we started here to go in from integrate and that showed already how difficult uh, it's going to be. You can see here seven French crossover. Seven French because we think I you know, want to be prepared for any perforation uh, to take maybe Viaban in. Uh, so therefore seven instead of six. Um, you can see that uh, with the stiff Terumo and the Judkins, five French was not possible here to get uh, the wire in also with a lot of push. However, then with the quick cross support catheter with uh, four hands, then we broke in here. Um, was a little hard here to proceed here with a stiff uh, wire, but uh, with um, yeah, four, four hands, then we could continue a little further down here. Um, a loop here, not so calcified, but then calcified again, uh, very hard here. And we broke down here to the area where the artery is open <coughs> again here at that calcium. Yeah, impossible to re-enter here. Um, that's where we stuck just now. And uh, of course, re-entry devices can be taken, however, in this kind of uh, severe calcium. I think one, and I think one um, 
advantage of going here now retrograde is that uh, if, if you take the retrograde route to go through the occlusion, um, you snare the wire, you finally, after passing the wire, you have a pull-through wire. And I think this pull-through wire helps for uh, all other further steps with ballooning, potentially the tumor stents with the bullfrog, um, also for, uh, for stenting later on. Uh, the stability of the pull-through wire is uh, just very special. And, and therefore, uh, this is for us now clearly a, a retrograde approach case. <coughs> very nice. Okay, I, I, I agree but, uh, that before having, we go having both ends of that wire really helps you track the device uh, over these uh, very, very calcified lesions. Yeah. Can you turn a little louder for me? Um, yeah, before we um, go in from retrograde, we actually prepare a little bit from undergrade already. Merken Sie was im Oberschenkel? Wir haben nichts. Okay. Andre, in what cases millimeter. would you use a reentry device rather than going retrograde? I don't see you using them too often. No. Yeah, well, rare. We use them, for example, for problematic common femoral arteries. For example, after surgery, when you have a flush occlusion, impossible to get into the um, occlusion from, from antegrade. Then, for example, we go from retrograde and take the reentry device to poke back into the common femoral. Things like this. Or, yeah, occasionally for, for very difficult lesions or to puncture uh, uh, into a balloon, balloon coming from retrograde, these kind of tricks. Um, so I give here a little bit of local anesthesia into the skin, and this is here now a um, nine centimeter long um, needle going down. Seven is usually a little bit too short. You also actually want to come or, or approach the artery a little bit rather in a shallow way. Find maybe here a, 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 a spot where it's not too calcified. That could be a good sto spot here. Huh? Mm -hmm. So give some local, but to check, maybe we go um, left oblique and see. Okay, so we are very close to the calcium, um, but of course for puncturing we have to go back. And um, yeah, as I said, usually. Uh, so currently our standard wire for SFAs is actually the Command 18, but for this approach it's rather still the, the V18, because the V18 has a little bit more s a stiffer body, and uh, this is what we need here for this case here. Okay. Andre, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your decision process and where to puncture the distal SFA versus, let's say, the popliteal or something else that's patent? Yeah, popliteal to, uh, with a necessity to turn the patient on the belly, never. So if uh, we still have enough place here to come from retrograde uh, via the distal SFA, it's always the distal SFA. This is the typical, I mean, uh, yeah, SFA occlusions going down to the adductor canal. Mm -hmm. Everything which uh, is occluded further down, we actually puncture from, from tibial. We puncture tibial arteries. Yeah, now you can see, uh, of course, very hard here, that uh, uh, cap of the occlusion also from retrograde. I uh, try to already here somehow push the wire inside, but obviously not possible. Um, potentially, this is not possible to do it with a wire plus support catheter only. Um, however, and we may need a sheath here from retrograde for French, but uh, let's see, it will give it a try here with a support catheter tracking over an O18 wire. Is that, is that your uh, standard approach? So so Begin and, uh, with a, uh, just a puncture in a wire and then go yeah. to the uh, support cath bareback and then at what point you, uh, at some point you're gonna transition to a sheath if this doesn't work. How often do you tend to go to a sheath for this approach? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so usually we start with a support catheter only, but I mean, if it's extremely calcified, we um, decide to directly go to a forefront sheath. Uh, here, this is, I would say, borderline case. So maybe uh, this is the collateral. I try to connect 250T, but I'm going to here. Okay, so I, I push the, ah, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, I push the catheter. Can I try to push the catheter a little <laughs> further down in? However, I don't think we'll have the support. Can you? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Once it's looped, perfect. Yeah. 
Uh, here you really need four hands with my machine. Just a moment. Good? Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Fantastic. I, I, I yeah. So you take loop out, although loop is mm. probably, or wire is quite destroyed. Mm. Mm. Okay, and uh, it looks like as if we broke into the segment of the artery which we have ballooned already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, now we need to snare the wire, but I think this wire is too destroyed yeah. to snare it. And we'll change to an 014 anyway for our bullfrog device. Just a moment. Yes, yeah, so for this, I think really pre-dilation is very, very helpful. Makes um, snaring of the wire uh, so the passage of the wire. Tut das weh? Oberschenkel, ja. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, under which wire are you going to uh, uh, switch to now? It's a PT2, yeah. PT2. Yeah. Just a moment. Yeah. yeah, usually, I mean, yeah, we snare the AO18 wire, which okay, we have used it's going very easy now, this one. Uh, to break through from retrograde. But as I said, in this case, because we plan to take now the bullfrog device in, uh, it's an 014 wire. Just a moment. Okay. Andre, <coughs> Andre, as you're working, we're going to start cutting to some of the uh, mm -hmm. talks. We have a number of talks to get through, so maybe as you're snaring the wire, yeah. if you could save some of those runs, we'll begin with the talks, and then we'll cut back to you periodically throughout this hour. Okay, Dr. Leipzig. Hi, Andre. This is Brian again. Uh, can you? Uh, we're going to give you yes. a few moments to show us uh, what you've been doing up till now. It looks like you have the bullfrog device in there, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah. 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 Correct. So we we snared first uh, the wire. So, yeah. Um, Snaring wire, again, if you have predilated, very easy, into Judkin's right catheter here. Uh, took it out, 014 wire. What we have done now is uh, we have stabilized the 014 here at the knee area with a um, <coughs> pedal puncture set, actually on the dilator of that. So keeping that hole which we created here in the artery very narrow. And here you can see that we pulled uh, through, once again, another quick cross catheter to redirect the wire so that the floppy tip would now look downwards. And we started here now, sorry, uh, with the bullfrog device um, to give injections here into the arterial wall. Okay, this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, now you can see these uh, two markers, proximal distal, two middle markers. They um, separated, that means the balloon opened up. Uh, I'd like to see those two markers now going into one direction, little hard, uh, yeah, like this here. Mm. Okay, then you should maybe also be able to see that little needle uh, angulation now is not the best here. Uh, not really visible, just a moment. Uh -huh. So this is going into the vessel. Probably going into the vessel, yeah. Okay, in calcium it sometimes happens. This one is also not the Typical calcification here, I would say, as we usually see the eccentric ones, this is more circumferential. Uh, but this one here is nicely going here into the arterial wall again, I would Not say. In the vein, uh -huh. Huh? Okay. How much are you giving at each uh, injection there? How many cc's and, and what, what's your concoction? Well, is that uh, each injection thing? is one milliliter each injection. And just a moment, let me try to take the. the no, uh, okay. Um, uh, it's uh, yeah, a mix of just want to take it down um, of local two percent and some contrast. Uh, it's usually a fifth of contrast here. Now, just moment. I twisted here now the balloon to the side where we do not have so much calcium. Although, yeah, it's more circumferential calcium here, and inject here, and so this now nicely going here into the arterial wall. So this device uh, is. Uh, Relatively easy, I would say, to twist into different directions. Andre, do you want to uh, explain to the audience how you mm -hmm. select patients for this device and which patients you think are ideal for the bullfrog? 
Yeah, I think ideal cases, I mean, ideal cases for local anesthesia at the SFA, I think, are those where you um, want to take super stents in, where it's very calcified, and you think you may have to really um, uh, predilate with high pressure, potentially over, also oversize your balloons because of calcium, uh, which usually is painful. Um, so this is one group where I think uh, this is um, good uh, for this uh, kind of device. However, of course, you could also do this percutaneously. And then it's yeah, the, the, the cases where with predilation you see that it's actually very painful for a patient. Now let's see around again. A little bit difficult. Um, although there's not a lot of calcium in, maybe ladies, young ladies, young girl ladies, where you think, well, um, maybe going several times through the skin is maybe also not a very good solution. Then I would directly go. And uh, then I think a bullfrog is better than uh, local anesthesia through the skin. Yeah. Shall I try once again here a little further down where we have this calcium? Just a moment. So Andre Mahmoud Rosavi here. At, do you Just use the moment. opportunity with the same device mm -hmm. to give yeah. anti-proliferatives or anti respinatics Yeah, you could, of course, now also mix it with yeah, DEXA, Meta, or so. We have not done it yet, yeah, but um, that would, could be possible, yeah. Not sure whether this is, I think, no, this is also sub intimal or mm -hmm. not in the lumen. Okay. I think it's enough. Huh? I think this is enough. Uh, and we're going to proceed now with, with ballooning. <clears throat> so, Andre, as you're doing that, we're going to, uh, again, cut back to some fine. talks, and we'll, uh, we'll skip back and forth yeah. to you, okay? Yeah, fine. Yeah, we are just uh, implanting here. Matthias is implanting here the superas. Uh, we, he wants to hit the femoral bifurcation with his stent. Um, okay. So do you have any, any so tips to, uh, to landing this properly right below the bifurcation? Yeah, so we usually take a longer stand, uh, approach Too the short. area um, with a longer stand so that at the end we, uh, we, we, we hit the last centimeters with a short 5.5, 40 millimeter. This is in the high one? Yeah. Uh, that makes it easier to, to really be precise. If you would try to really but however we end can 150 or 200 anymore. millimeter supera at the bifurcation, that is really difficult. 5,45. Although I'm not really convinced whether it's a good idea. What do you think? Is it maybe fun-like, the, the um, origin of the SFA? Shall we have a look? Maybe it looks yeah. like a funnel. Yeah. Let me do an angio. <laughs> no. Not really. OK. So yeah. Schwinn? So the shorter stents mm -hmm. are obviously more easy to deploy uh, or easier to deploy uh, more accurately after yeah. that bifurcation. Yeah, yeah. And also more precise. Does the panel do anything uh, differently? Absolutely, yes. on the panel, uh, Remind us what size that you're putting in now. Which one is this? We have 5.5 um, diameter, 40 is the length. Should we make a roadmap? Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have the half sizes as you have. Oops, no, ganz, ganz ruhig, ruhig liegen, nicht bewegen. Just a moment. So for the audience here, if you uh, want to land it like these guys okay. are going to do, of course these guys are experts. Uh, you don't want to oversize your uh, supera too much because that would lengthen uh, the device. Uh, or you want to pre-dilate, uh, obviously, the vessel to size, so you'd be able to land it uh, nicely. So, was it trocken? Yeah, no, for the audience, um, absolutely, you know, vessel preparation, you have to really be aggressive. Um, or a superior, I mean, it's very good for, and I've seen it happen. Uh, you think you land in the SFA and it ends up in the external iliac uh, for, for vessel prep. So that can be emphasized enough, which it looks like they clearly did so. If you look at the struts on the stent itself, they clearly did a good job with that. Can see now a bit Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the stand is three times longer inside the delivery system. If you see it, uh, the proximal end is coming down. I have to pull a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. This mm. looks quite okay. Ah, very good. Perfect. Yep. Okay, let's have a look. This is why these guys are I may are show you before that hard uh, to do. Well, um, what we have done. So we have predilated the whole lesion with a 640 Pacific, but uh, 640 did not fully open everywhere. You can see here, very hard to open here. That was the um, end of the occlusion. At 18 atmospheres, finally, eventually, the balloon opened up here. Um, further up here, seeing this balloon, it still has some kind of waste. So. If uh, six by with 25 atmospheres doesn't fully open, uh, don't implant. Go, don't go directly for 5.5 superior implantation. It will fail. This is after that to rule out any perforation. Then we continued here with a seven millimeter um, conquest balloon. So this is absolutely non-compliant. Uh, by this, the risk of perforating is, I think, clearly much lower than using here semi-compliant seven millimeter balloon. And we had the impression that, yeah, with 40 atmospheres here, that uh, lesion would open nicely, although there's still some recoil. I think this recoil can be a problem for, for Sepera. And thereafter, uh, again, we ruled out here a perforation. Andre, can you Matthias tell us why you used a short, a short balloon and as opposed to a longer balloon with uh, less inflation? <coughs> yeah. Um, so a, a longer balloon can, I mean, easily show some kind of uh, dog bone formation. It opens fully up, especially if it's a semi-compliant character uh, where the artery is not that calcified, but the waste remains where it's so much calcium. So really to crack calcium, I think you should take the shortest balloons uh, you have. So 40 uh, is already borderline, actually. For, so if we would have had a real problem here, very focal, definitely we would have uh, gone in with a 20 millimeter long balloon. But as you can see, 5.5 Supera, potentially six outer would also have worked. Um, works nicely here. And then as you have seen just now, the implantation of the last one by Matthias. And let's have a, have a look what it looks like. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Yeah, looks good. Some contrast beside this stent proximally. But actually, in the beginning, some, yeah, yeah, our wire went wrong. I think this is not overstretching the artery, but uh, that wire passage. Oops, this is not so. Ah. Andre, can you tell us how you manage your distal uh, uh, access site? Oh, this is only, I mean, um, 018 compatible catheter which is inside here so just press <laughs> with your finger for two minutes or so or five minutes um, if we would have had a four French sheath in here uh, we would uh, take a blood pressure cuff from outside probably or press by hand but check later on by angio whether everything is okay here of course I mean there's still quite some disease at that area where we have punctured so nothing wrong with taking the wire down further down and take it maybe drug coated balloon here to, to smoothen these uh, remaining stenosis here. Okay, but I think we are quite happy with this here. That looks very nice. How about your it choice of nice. stent sizes? What's, what's your, your uh, most yeah. commonly used stent size? Yeah, unfortunately 5.5. <laughs> we don't have 6.0. Um, but, uh, well, we try to, to, to take big stents in. So, however, of course, this always, always depends on um, how uh, predilation works. In this case, uh, we, we clearly saw that uh, we cannot upsize to maybe a seven semi-compliant balloon to crack everything. Uh, so, therefore, we thought 5.5 is okay. And also, I mean, of course, we size um, um, looking at the distal reference vessel. I think if you take one millimeter bigger in proximal, that may not really help you. Uh, with uh, with the result, yeah, but I think it's very good to have half sizes. Very nice. Okay. Comments from the panel. Nice case. Yeah. So, w when are you going to address that distal disease? You said this patient has a uh, toe ulcer or gangrene of the toe. 
Yeah, yeah. And he has gangrene. So probably the next days, we're going to go integrate uh, left downwards and try to open up some of the tibial arteries or foot arteries. But it looks very difficult, yeah. Uh, and, and as you were uh, prepping and dilating okay, with the so uh, balloon, yeah. does, did he feel any uh, discomfort? Did the patient uh, feel any of that, or did you do a pretty good job with the bullfrog and the lidocaine? He, he felt absolutely nothing. So that was really quite helpful to do here, the local anesthesia. Uh, this patient may not have been so sensitive as others, but uh, you all know these patients where opening a four millimeter balloon is already um, dramatic and uh, it helps so much here to do this local anesthesia. It's really very, very helpful. So there's no bleeding now <coughs> because the, the sheath or the dilator of the pedal excess sheath is still inside. So as I said, usually we do not block from, out, from, from inside for hemostasis. It's only really if we, if we have to treat that area anyway. Okay. So I took now that little sheath out. Okay, and press here a little bit, maybe undersized, four millimeter. Yeah, fine. And what are you using here? This is a DCB? So, done. Huh? Well, this is now for pre dilation, the four millimeter, um, but uh, now we're going to use a, a, a DCB, correct? Yeah, let's take. A lumin, uh, um, uh, yeah, a, what shall we take? Lumin or 500 or so, 520. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. 520. 520. So, Andre, maybe uh, we'll do one last talk. We have one yeah. final talk of the session, and then uh, we'll come back for your final images yeah. right before we close, okay? Yeah, perfect. Result. Andre, do you have some uh, images to uh, show us and wrap up? Uh, I can make you an image. So we did ballooning here with a Lutonic struck out balloon, and uh, we pressed a little bit from outside, potentially not yet enough. Let's have a look here. Um, of course, sometimes in calcified arteries, may take some time. Yeah, we still have here a little bleeding, but uh, of course, this will heal instantly when, when we press a little bit more. Yeah, otherwise, also this, I think, so far okay. And as I said, we have to go integrate for below the knee. Okay. Yeah, so we are done with this case for today. Very nice. How, how, uh, how, uh, how would you manage that bleeding if it was uh, more significant? Do you do a repeat balloon tamponade of that or, or how often are you using covered stents here? And how would the, maybe after you answer, see how the panel would uh, do this? I cannot, yeah, I, can, I cannot remember that we have used covered stents for these kind of excess arteries. Um, since we only use uh, a support catheter or four French, so it would be prolonged uh, blood pressure cuff from outside. Actually, not from, no, no balloon from inside. Our experience is that if you balloon from inside, that doesn't shorten the, the hemostasis time. Potentially, it uh, needs some, some plasma here and thrombocytes to go there. What, what about an obese patient where, where you, you're unable to really get good compression or potentially the hematoma is within the thigh and you're not able to visualize yeah. it or, or palpate it? Yeah. Well, I, I actually cannot really recall um, a problem. Um, also there, of course, I mean, if, if old patients with very soft tissue around uh, maybe a higher uh, risk that, that something happens, yeah, potentially there for some time, balloon tamponade from inside and compression from outside. But at the end, uh, we finish always with only compression from, from outside. Yeah, I can remember 15, 20 minutes uh, that we had this compression from outside. Very often we start with blocking or having the compression from outside already on the thigh while we're still working on that lesion. Not in this case where we wanted to have this pull through wire. Uh, but in many other cases, you can balloon stand everything while your compression already uh, uh, works for, for the hemostasis. So, no, I think it's really not, not a problem. I think it's very important to really have the final angle should show that everything is closed here. Uh, before that, uh, we will not take the patient from the table. And for the panel, uh, anybody use larger than a uh, micropuncture yeah. at this level or uh, larger sheaths here? 
From time to time, you have to. We try to stick to a four French sheets yeah, if we need French. to. And there are nice long four French sheets. You want to keep this access size as small as possible. I wouldn't yeah. go bigger than four French. I don't think you would need larger than four French. Uh, you get all your catheters and wires for that. That's not an issue. Yep, I agree. Four French is as big as I would go. All right. Very nice case, Andre. Very well done. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks.